record and welcome everybody to the Rec Innovation Lab to our workshop series with Gwen and Gabby, who um, are always favorites of the Rec. And uh, we're just so glad to see them again, grateful for them sharing their knowledge and expertise with all of the startup founders and, and helping everyone to uh, approach this world of, uh, of our innovation ecosystem in a in much healthier and holistic way. So we appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and um, we are ready to go on our side. If anybody has any questions along the way, feel free to put the questions in the chat. Uh, make sure that while we're well, we are uh, in the workshop, if you wouldn't mind just turning your microphones and cameras off to limit that, uh, that drain on the bandwidth. And uh, Gabby or Gwen, would one of you like to sh start by sharing your slides or would you like us to start with a poll? We are going to share. We're not ready for the poll just yet. We'll let you know when we're ready for that. Can you see my screen now? I think I clicked the right button. Mm -hmm, we sure can. <laughs> we can see it. Yay. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. Um, we are ready to talk about emotions into action. And we are always grateful to have the REC invite us over to share with you. Uh, this is something that, you know, started just from the, from the fun that Gwen and I have together. We are uh, really longtime friends, professional friends, and now we have become almost like sisters. Now we do share the same day, so we could technically be sisters, and uh, and and it took off, and we're super happy to get invited, and we love uh, sharing a little bit of what we have learned with each other, from each other, and with the groups that we work with, with you. Let me yes, see. and look at, we even had Swati and uh, and the chat say she thought we were sisters mm -hmm. um, and we do get that. Um, so <laughs> hello everyone. It's wonderful to be here with a very dear community, the REC community, um, and to talk about some of our favorite topics, which has to do with really in your development and our ability to um, support in working better with others in the development of your business and just ultimately being a better human. Um, Gabby and myself uh, are really committed to that and all the work that we do. So you see here uh, our favorite picture together with Chardonnay and curls. That's our signature for each other, Chardonnay and curls. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, and Gabby and myself will be co-facilitating each one of us kind of touching on different topics, but please know that this is a conversation. And if you ever have any questions, um, any comments or anything, please feel free to type them in the chat or even better, if you'd like to unmute yourself, if you'd like to turn your camera on, um, we'd love to engage in live conversation um, and learn on the spot and share uh, things as we go. Fabulous. So with that, let's all like take a deep breath and get into the spirit of talking about emotions and action. So we start with this image of a big roller coaster. And uh, some of you have your cameras off. If you want to close your eyes or just, you know, listen in for a minute, we're going to do like, let's, let's start thinking about how we usually go about emotions. So let's start, go back in time until this morning. So the alarm goes off. At the, at the expected time, how do you feel? Or you're waking up by the door, by the dog next door, that happened to me, uh, how do you feel? Or your alarm didn't go off at all and now you're rushing and running, how do you feel? So a little bit further in the morning, you go down for breakfast and your toast is burnt, how do you feel? How do you react to that? Or you uh, encounter traffic, and how, well, it's, that's kind of difficult in these days, <laughs> but how do you feel about that? Or you get into your important meeting in Zoom and, you're, and your camera doesn't work. How do you feel, right? Um, you have, maybe you have kids doing learning from, from uh, home. How are you feeling? How are you reacting to that? And so on, I mean, fast forward up to this moment, five o'clock, seven o'clock for me, I'm calling in from Mexico City tonight. Um, and what's happening, right? How do you feel? So the idea is sometimes we don't even think about it, but through our day, uh, we go over this roller coaster of emotions and you know, turn, some crazy turns, some easy turns, some intense moments, 
some not intense moments. So today we took an approach of uh, being a little bit more into the practice of how do we actually turn this, which is a reality of every day. It's a roller coaster of emotions. Uh, how do we turn them into action? So we were reading, I mean, of course we always prepare and we're always getting some new um, information. So the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence just uh, released a study. And in that study, what caught our eye was that um, 30% of jobs today require soft skills, what we call soft skills, right? Which now we know you being entrepreneurs know that more than anybody, soft skills are not really that soft, right? So they're actually pretty hard. So 30% of jobs require soft skills, yet only 42% of employers believe that new graduates are actually adequately prepared for the workforce, especially when we talk about social and emotional skills. So we keep reading and getting this kind of statistics and we thought, well, let's build a series of workshops. So this is the first one that we're sharing with you here at the REC that help us, help us be ready with this social and emotional skills that are so important now, 30% of jobs require this. And with that, here's one. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Gabby. So, Gabby talked about kind of the emotional roller coaster that you go throughout your day. Um, and, you know, sometimes we think that emotions, um, that this roller coaster is in chunks of time, but really it's all throughout the day, as she highlighted, from the moment that you get up to the moment that you're joining us today, there's been already emotions that you have felt and ways that you've reacted to them. Um, and what we're sharing now is kind of some data around that. So the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence did a study to find out how people feel, what's the most common feelings that people feel in the workplace. And this word cloud has all those listed there, those feelings. So what, tell me, is there anything here that kind of stands out to anybody that you're a little bit surprised with, um, maybe a particular word? or that a word's more bold or that a certain word exists, anybody like to share? Like I said, you can, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself if you'd like to type in the chat. Um, just in seeing this, any initial reactions? It's okay. There will be more opportunities. Let's. We'll go to the next one. I was gonna. Can I? Can I add one thing? Uh, sure. For for me, it, so it's Tanya. Um, this seems about right right now. Like it feels like yeah. a really stressful semester time, stressful time of year, and um, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. just out. And and COVID seems to be making it worse. <laughs> yes. And uh, this study has been done um, in the past year, so it is pretty accurate. Lauren says it seems pretty accurate. Kristen says the negative words are bolder, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate, right? And uh, I think it's Nicole. Uh, helpless seems very depressing when it comes to work, right? So nonetheless, these are emotions that we're- really quick? Gwen, oh, sure. it's Swati. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, one thing I look at this, I feel all of these at the same time, like simultaneously. I think mm -hmm. that's something that I struggle with. Like in any given day, I'll feel all of these things, the good and the bad, and that's overwhelming. It is. It really, it truly is. And thank you. You're, you're we're already introducing points that we're going to discuss in that um, you know, and even Gabby, when she talked about it, about from the moment that you wake up until this moment today, you could have felt 10 of these different emotions. But then when it comes to the summary of your day, we may focus on just one of them. And it may be, unfortunately, the negative one that was felt most throughout. But sometimes in feeling all of these emotions, it's really sitting down and understanding what they are, what is truly the emotion that's coming through. Um, and that's, that's what we're looking to explore. That's what we're looking to understand. If we move to the next slide, um, the next one says, this one is about people in the workplace. And so this one says how college students feel. This are the most common feelings, once again, in the past year that uh, the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence has done. So we see a lot of commonalities, right? We see a lot of stressed, was the big one in the last one and stress is the big one right now. There's anxious, there's overwhelmed, there's all these kinds of um, words that we see similarity. So 
when we think about transforming our, our feelings into action, it's really a benefit for your life or anything, right? Because it's going to help your situation right now in college and it's going to also support your ability for whether it is you're in the workforce already, um, you're looking to enter the workforce or you are starting a company and you want to support in your ability to drive healthy, healthy relationships and the ability for people to, to work through and understand their emotions. Gabby, next slide. So Makiko, we kind of read your thoughts. This is the this is the, the difference between the workplace and college students. There's another slide that we, we won't include today. Tanya, I'll send it to you about how educators are feeling these days as well. So it's very mm -hmm. interesting to see some of the some of the cross um you know, overlapping of these emotions. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. So the goal, right, like I said, that we're talking about is we don't want to squash these emotions. I know that, um, Swati, you were saying sometimes you feel all of these emotions in a day and it's extremely overwhelming. And what we definitely don't want to do is we don't want people to avoid them, squash them, not feel them. Um, people tend to hide what they're feeling, especially in social environments, if it's at work, if it's at school, whatever it may be. Um, what it, regardless of whatever emotion it is that you're that you're feeling, negative, positive, or both at the same time, and the goal of really with emotional intelligence and what we want to discuss today is how do we transform these emotions into productive action? So we need to recognize them, we need to label them, and we need to transform them. That's what we're looking to do, and that's where our conversation is focused on today. Right, like so, there's a there, sometimes there's this misconception or misinterpretation that being emotionally intelligent means we're in the high level, great emotion at all times, and that's not really what that means. It's how do we really transform the emotions, get the information that they're telling us, and move them into action, and not really to squash the emotions, but really use them as the energy that they represent. Yes, I would say that Gabby and myself we study this, right? We we um, we're, this is, we're nerdy in that way that we love this topic and we read about it and we discuss it and we'll have conversations all around it. But we still, we still experience all these emotions as well. And right now in a moment, we'll see more, a chart that explores more of the various ones. Um, so it's not that we don't, these emotions are absent, but it's that we really pay attention, recognize, label them, and then understand how to best take action from them so that we are performing at our best self when possible. Next slide. There we go. All right. So there is this beautiful chart. And uh, Gabby, can you tell us where is this chart from? Um, this, that is the chart. Well, this chart is also put out by the Yale um, Center for Inte Emotional Intelligence. So this particular chart um, that we're going to look at in just a moment is showing you placing emotions on a spectrum of energy and pleasantness. And what we want to do, like I said, is really understand what it is that we're feeling. So let's do this activity. So find something to write with, whether it's on a piece of paper, or if you're writing a notebook, if you don't have that and a pen readily available, maybe just open a notepad on your phone or type it in a text somewhere. It's nothing you have to keep necessarily. It's just quickly for this um, activity. And I, we're gonna, I'm gonna time you, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to write down all the emotions that you know. So all of the emotions that you are aware of, that you, that you know that people can feel, whether you felt them or not, go ahead, take 30 seconds, write them down, and then I'll give you more instructions. Starting now. Fifteen seconds. All right, that was thirty seconds. So whatever you were able to write down. Now, what I would like you to do is go ahead and count up 
how many emotions you wrote and then put that in the chat. Put in the chat the total number of emotions that you were able to write or to identify. And I, we'd like to see what the number, number, what we're around. Okay, so we got eight, we got six, seven, lots of eights, a couple fives. Okay. My goodness, Tanya, 26, that's fantastic. We have six, we have eight. There's a reason why you're the educator, right? We have, <laughs> I think I saw three up here. But I could be I could be making that up. I'm trying to scroll up. Okay, great. All right, go ahead and take us to the next slide, Gabby. Here we go. All right. So remember that um, this chart is from the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, which obviously focuses on emotions. Um, which has this chart has a hundred emotions that we feel and that we experience according to um this center we had some people who wrote eight we had six we had five tanya did fantastic with 26 but this is a hundred a hundred emotions right when you look at this list and remember it's on the spectrum of energy so when you go up it's higher energy and when you go across it's level of pleasantness if i'm saying that word correctly i don't know if i'm saying it correctly um so look at all these words, like think about it. I'm sure that you've used some of these words and you didn't write them down. You probably use them as synonyms and essays and such, right? We always look for a synonym to, to use a different word to sound a little smarter, but how, how often have you used it to really identify and communicate how you're feeling? You will probably stick to what everybody was saying, six to eight different emotions. That's what we stick to. That's how we label what we're feeling. But in actuality, when we learn to better recognize the differences and the different emotions that we're feeling, then we can more accurately take action on them in a productive way. So that's the benefit of learning to understand the difference between these. Let's do a little activity to see if we can do that. Um, if we could have the poll, poll number one launched now. So we're gonna do this quick poll. We're actually gonna do three of them. So we'll do poll one first. All right, so Angela, you wanna go ahead and launch that poll for us? Are you able to do it from where you are? Mm -hmm. All right, oh, it was up and then it disappeared. There we go, oh, disappeared again. <laughs> there, I can see it. Okay, there we go, okay. <laughs> So poll number one. So this is the definition of one of these two um, emotions. So select which one you think it is. This emotion is feeling like your expectations are not met. Is that emotion anger or disappointment? Oh, you did not select this question. Angela, oh, Angela, can you, can you, uh, I think you need to end the poll and start over again, relaunch it. Okay, let's see here. Um, let me see if I can. Here, here maybe I'll launch it. I got it. There we go. Continue. All right. There we go. Now you can select. Great. Okay. So go ahead and select anger, disappointment. Ooh, look at that. So only, uh, so I don't think everybody can see it if they're not, uh, if they're not, uh, the uh hosts i'm not oh, sure i can't i can't do anything can you uh you can't answer yes or no on the poll i don't even see the poll mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's un unusual that's very unusual well it's okay yeah. we're gonna improvise and if we could just um type into chat can... which one do you think it is well, okay there that... we go i'll put the i'll put the question in there can you recognize this emotion feeling like expectations are not met and then uh, anger or disappointment, anger or disappointment, feeling like expectations are not met. If you want to put those in the chat, that would also work. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So we have disappointment. I see mm -hmm. Rachel says anger, disappointment. Okay. So far disappointment is the winner. Let's see. And share the results. Share the results for those who did answer. All right, Gabby, 
What is the correct answer? Ooh, well, you guys are good emotional scientists. Uh, the correct answer is disappointment. Disappointment is the feeling of your expectations are met versus anger. The definition of anger is the feeling of perceived injustice or something that's blocked and not in your control. So per the per perceived injustice is really a definition of anger. And see what happens sometimes with that, as I would say, is that from feeling disappointment, it, that could lead to anger, but the initial feeling could be disappointment, but the one that is labeled is anger, right? Um, so that's why it's a matter of trying to identify uh, what truly is the emotion that is being felt. Um, oh, Ray, I see your response. What truly is the emotion that's being felt, felt so that you can take productive action. Yes. Can, All right, can let's I, do the can next I just, poll. Can I just say one thing to that? Uh, yeah, for, absolutely. Because if I get angry, generally in that situation, which I have, mm -hmm. most of the time it says, but when I get anger, angry, it's at myself. Mm. Because what happened was my expectation of what was done, I shouldn't have allowed myself that expectation. So I'm actually angry at myself more so than the other person. Do you feel that, that yeah, I mean, so, so the idea with this exercise is the more in tune we are with what we're feeling and we're labeling it, then that can move us into different actions. So if you, I mean, if you have defined and you can identify the moment when you're angry at yourself because of those expectations, then sure, fine. I mean, and if it serves your emotional goal, the, I mean, we're not really... Nikki, I mean, nitpicking at the definition itself, it's just the idea of how well can we recognize the emotion? Because later on, we're going to see how that can trigger us into action. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. All right, let's do the next one. All right, Angela, can you uh, pull up the next poll? Can everyone see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, Ray, I saw a thumbs up. Thanks for that, Ray. Okay, so can you recognize this emotion? You're full of pleasure. Is it excited or are you happy? Which one is it? Go ahead and select. All right, we're gonna close the poll and show results. All right, look at this. We have excited, but we have happy. Everybody said happy. Gabby, can you tell us what is the correct answer? The correct answer, you guys are really, really good. The correct answer is happy. The definition of happy is full, uh, the feeling of being full of pleasure, while excited is strong feelings about something good that's about to happen. So it's a little mm -hmm. different, right? Something good that's about to happen. Yeah. And again, we're not saying that we can't have both emotions at the same time. The, this idea is we're trying to show you is like the more we learn about emotions, the more we're able to label them or name them, the easier it will be to apply strategies to then turn them into productive action. Woo! Good job, Yay. guys. All right. One more time. Let's do this. One more poll. Same thing. Same process. You guys can show off some more. All right, last one. Can you recognize this emotion? It's tired, lacking interest in something or someone. Are you bored or are you apathetic? Ooh. I give it a couple <laughs> more seconds. Get your response in. All right, let's go ahead and close the poll and share. Wow, look at that. <laughs> wow, 50-50, bored and apathetic. Okay, so this was a tough one. Wow. Gabby, tell us. <laughs> All right, the correct answer for this one is uh, bored. Bored is being tired or lacking interest in something or someone. Uh -huh. And apathetic, the definition of apathetic is um, a simple, not simple, but a, a lack of enthusiasm. Uh -huh. There's a little bit of a difference there. Wow, look at that. So the more we explore the different kinds of emotions, then the more we can trigger them into that productive action. Good job. Good job, everyone. Thank you.
And now Gabby's going to talk a little bit more about the different quadrants here. Um, so Gabby, go right ahead. All right, so a little bit more about the quadrant. So you see the different font colors that we have. And usually, I mean, there's another multiple studies that studies have been done to identify emotions. You know, we've done that even with kids. And when we ask them what color is what you're feeling, then there's a, a different association with the colors. So this quadrant is no different. And you can find a lot of other research on that. But for the sake of today, we're using this particular diagram, again, that was um, developed by Mark Brackhead and the Yale um, Emotion, uh, Center for Emotional, uh, Emotional Intelligence. So red, of course, is high energy, high unpleasantness, right? Uh, or sorry, high energy, low unpleasantness. These are the emotions that usually we say, okay, I don't want to have those, those emotions. These are, these are the emotions that not necessarily cause us pleasure, yet they're there. And these are some of the emotions to which might, we might react in a more automatic way, as we're going to see later. Now, on the right side of this, or well, my right, which is the yellow quadrant, that's high energy, high pleasantness, right? You see words like happy, proud, playful, hopeful, all of those really feel good emotions, high, high energy, also high pleasure. Now, on the bottom of the quadrant, we have the blue one, which is low energy and high unpleasantness, right? So something like disgusted, glum, disappointed, sad, discouraged. So not a lot of high energy. We might not be like screaming like we would do if we're angry or nervous, but, um, well, I don't scream when I'm nervous, but you, you get the idea. <laughs> Uh, but we, but it's still that that feeling of not being so pleasant. Now, one of the tendencies is you want to get out of these emotions as quickly as we can. And one of the messages that we want to tell you today is like, yeah, I mean, we all want to move into more pleasantness, right? That's that's one of the goals of emotional intelligence. It also has to do with your emotional goal and what is it that you want to do. Um, but there's other other studies that all of these emotions, even the unpleasant ones, are really good information. And there's very specific action that we're, we're going to show you in a couple of slides that can come from being in that particular quadrant. Uh, last but not least is the green quadrant, which is uh, low energy, high pleasantness, right? Loving, grateful, touched. So you know, calm, relaxed, restful, blessed, balanced. All of those really, again, good feel emotions, maybe not so, so, so high in energy. Um, what's important about this quadrant, and one of the things that we have been practicing with groups is once you identify which is the emotion that you're that you're having or that you're feeling is one question that we ask and one question that I start asking myself is, where do I want to be? And is this emotion serving me right now? And if it is, do I want to stay in this quadrant? Or where do I want to move? Right? Mm -hmm. Especially when I'm like in the red is, do I want to, does it serve me today? And we're going to see lately, I mean, in, in a minute that sometimes it, it is helpful to be in the red quadrant. So is it serving me? Does it help me right now? Or do I want to move? And then I can make a decision. Now I'm staying in the red or I'm staying in the yellow or I'm staying in the, not necessarily the color, but that particular emotion. I think that's okay. So anything else Gwen, about that? Nope. Any questions? You actually, you actually gave me more than I wanted, but I'll take it. <laughs> all right so then so how does it, this all work so the first part and we do a lot of work uh where we actually work and work in identifying those emotions and then you know making some of the shifts do i want to go to a different quadrant do i stay uh so here's another good exercise that we can start all you know practicing when you especially let's let's take anger and disappointment that we define um, a little bit ago. So think about disappointment. When you're disappointed, what shifts do you notice? So what happens in your body physiologically when you're when you're disappointed? Where does it? Where do you feel it? Anybody? You can put it in the chat or unmute your your um, microphone. My heart. You feel it in your heart. heart. Okay. What what else? How does it feel when you're disappointed? How does it feel? Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and how exactly does that feel horrible we have horrible in the chat horrible it okay. does. There's 
horrible chest like death. Feel it in my stomach, right? Now think of your body. You think of your body. How does it feel? Overwhelming. How does overwhelming feel? Right? Heaviness. I would say a heaviness that happens. You feel going down. Yes. There's a weight. Exactly. Right. And then what happens in your thoughts? So we're, again, we're talking about disappointment, right? What happens in your thoughts? What's the self-talk? Oh, I, you know, I don't know. You, you guys help me out. I should have done this. I should have not done that. Oh my God. If I only, right. So all that talk that get, automatically gets inside our, our brains, like, why did I do that? Or yeah. did I not yeah. do that? And then yeah. nine nights go by and it's like, oh my God, why did I just do that? Right? Yes. So or why did the other person do what they did or didn't do? So what happens in your thoughts? What happens in your actions? So what are the behaviors when you're disappoint disappointed? What, are, what happens? What are some of the actions? Help me out. I cry. I cry when I'm disappointed. Okay. You're quiet, blaming myself. You shut down. You're reading the chat or you're answering for yourself, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm reading the chat, Gabby. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you shut down. But I do. I do <laughs> shut down. Everything's <laughs> valid, right? Everything's valid. What do you do? Yes. Behavior. Yes, yes. So you sometimes cry. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And then the other part is, so there's another part of the body, right? Like it's not just the physiology, but what's your expression? right? When I'm disappointed, I might just like have this terrible look or um, what is my body reaction? Some people shake, some people just like, yeah, you have a cold expression or uh, your body tenses up. Mm -hmm. Body tenses up. Right. I don't know what RBF is. What does that stand for, Samantha? I would say body expression. I would say there's even, a, there's a, I would say there's a shift in energy right yeah. with the body absolutely so if we did the same example but we use anchor <laughs> rbf <laughs> yep feeling oh. down sad man you guys are being pretty honest today i love it <laughs> we have a lot of energy i love it <laughs> i can see that <laughs> um what if we did the same, you know, like little analysis, but we use anger instead of disappointment. What's the shift? So let's go. So when you're angry, what's the physiology? And I think Ray, you, you mentioned some of the things. So what happens? Does it feel the same? Do you feel in the same place in your body as disappointment or is it different? Okay. Samantha, you cry, you cry. Well, let's talk about the physiology first, right? Okay. So in disappointment, some of you said the chest, a heaviness. Some like, you know, weight over my shoulders. How about anger? Where do you feel it? What does it feel like physically in your body? My face gets hot, fist forms. Okay. Hot, not, not. in the throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Burn in your stomach sometimes. Yeah. So notice the difference when we, when we're able to label the um, emotion and then we go through some of these reflection, they do feel different and that's information in itself, right? Because the moment I have that gut, you know, feeling like my stomach is burning, then I know I'm angry. I'm not disappointed, right? I'm angry. And then the rest of, of the, the answers to these questions are different too. So what, what happens in your thoughts when you're angry? I get really hot in my back, all in my back up. My temperature rises. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you tell yourself? What are some of the thoughts that happen right away when you feel angry? Cannot form oh, clear right thoughts, up. yeah. Mm -hmm. You see red, get a bad headache. Yeah. In your yeah. thoughts. My breathing is, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Absolutely. What are some of the actions? Angry thoughts in a continuous loop. Yeah. You want to yell or scream? Yell, scream. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes you cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone said, eat a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on to those. We're going to talk about those in a minute. Of course. Yeah. That's the mission. Eat a bowl of ice cream. Slam the door. Slam my fist. You think of retaliation, absolutely, right? In your actions. Retaliation. Mm -hmm. Eat that fool up. <laughs> Eat that fool up. Yes. yes, yes. What are some of the facial expressions or your body expression? I think they said there was yelling, there was slamming yep. the fists, there was Heart face, um, glare, things yeah, like that. Yeah, breathing, breathing changes, all of those things. Yes. Sure. So the idea with this reflection today is sometimes or not sometimes, really the simple action of recognizing an emotion as we experience it in the moment that we experience it can become a really important key to regulating that emotion in the most useful way, right? So just the simple act of recognizing it could take us a long way into productive action. Mm -hmm. So let's take another look at how this actually works. So remember those quadrants that we talked about, and here are some examples on my left, left on the left of your screen, you see the, the quadrants as we defined them before with some examples of the emotions. Now look on the right though, because this is what we meant when there's some emotions that can drive really important action. So look at the red, for example, it could be, so I know when I'm in some of the emotions of red, it can, it can move me forward, right? It, it can propel some action. If I have genuinely, or, you know, traditionally be timid about something sometimes, I need to be a little bit in the red to have a courageous conversation, to uh, give a speech, sometimes even to, to give a presentation, right? Depending, depending on the group that I'm talking to sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, looking yellow, perfect, perfect quadrant for creative writing, for brainstorming. So when you start looking at this is, you know, of, of course, today we're going to be talking more about individually, how do we work with these emotions and turn them into action. Think of also the dimension, what happens when we apply this to our teams, to our groups, right, to our teachers, to our students. Um, if I know that there's high energy and high pleasantness, maybe it's a good time to do some brainstorming, some creative um, work, versus if you know, we just all got bad news or something and we're in the blue, uh, this might be better work for just individual time or, um, yeah, showing empathy, having different kinds of conversations. And finally, examples on the green is like, you know, when you're in calm, in that, you know, beautiful green quadrant, which happens to be my favorite color, but that has nothing to do with this quadrant. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it does, maybe it does. Maybe it does. Right? Great place for reflection. Or that's when you can maybe be, build more consensus amongst your teams or your family or, you know, your friends and whoever you are in, in contact with. So this is some example. Yeah. And in looking at this, when you look at these, it's also a way to see this range of emotions in a positive way. We tend to limit as which emotions we see positively and productively. But in actuality, when you know how to use these various areas, these various times that you're in these different emotions in a productive way, um, it's really a benefit in all aspects of work and relationships in life and everything. It's just a matter of understanding when and how they can be productive. And you don't want to live in just one, even though, you know, um, maybe a, a static, elated, cheerful, and joy um, is a great place to be in all the time. You want to experience a range of emotions. Um, because you, all of these things listed here um, are things that you probably need to do in some way with when working with others and experience. So, um, right. The idea, the, the idea as well is how do we balance them, right? I mean, we can mm -hmm. if we stay in one, just one emotion or one range of emotions all the time. That's exhausting. Think of the mm -hmm. high energy emotions, even if you're super, 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 super mega happy all the time, that could be exhausting. And, you know, at some point might trigger different behaviors and different things. So the idea is how do we create a balance? All emotions are great information and all emotions are useful. So it's a matter of recognizing and discovering what can I use this energy for? Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, we have a little simple process that we have used over time. Uh, on how do we do this? So we're giving you a lot of information already, but here's an idea, and it's only four, not small, small but mighty things that we can do. So the first one is sense. 
So the idea with emotions, now you know that there, there are these different colors. There's at least a hundred emotions that we can list, right? So what is exactly that I'm feeling? And here's where a little bit of reflection comes a long way. So sense, what are the triggers? What is the root cause of your emotion, right? What is your automatic response to the emotion? Some of you already answered, right? When I'm angry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, what about when you are sad? What do you do? What, what about when you're happy? So start doing that. And, you know, it's a lot of reflection. How do I react to all of these emotions through my day? We started our conversation today thinking about your morning routine and all of the range of emotions that might have happened. And sometimes we don't even notice them. So that's the idea. Sense the emotion. Notice it. Uh, what's the trigger? What... What is your go-to response sometimes? And then the idea of taking a pause, which is probably the most difficult thing to do, especially if we're reacting to something uh, or something that we didn't plan might happen. So pause, take a few seconds to pause and really assess the situation. This next one, we called it um, see your best self. Because so, for example, I, I've been working with emotional intelligence for a long, long, long time, and I've always loved it. And I've always loved the science of it, the application of it, and, and really the productivity of it. But when I became a lot more in tune to my own emotions was when I, I was actually, you know, raising a child, well, I'm still are raising a child. And it's like, so what is it? What's the role model that I want to be emotionally? What's the, what, what's my best self, right? If I get angry and yell, is that productive for me? Is that productive for him? Sometimes it is, but sometimes a lot of times it's not. So what is it that I want to be? So even in that little moment is what's my best self. You know, you get an angry, an angry email from your boss. What's your best self? What do you want to be? What's that emotional best self that you want to be? And sometimes that helps us pause. Again, not to squash the emotion, but to work through the emotion. And last but not least, strategize. I would say with my, my recommendation with see your best self is to create almost, if there's a common uh, experience that you're going through, um, that you have this re these reoccurring emotions that come up, um, create this persona, right? Um, whether it be like how this best self, whether maybe a future self, maybe who you want to be in the future, um, <clears throat> how can you act as that person um, who wasn't immediately feeling these uh, emotions? And that can help you be a little bit more objective and strategize a little bit better. I'll share for myself. Um, I, I did this a lot with uh, my partner and then I would say like, I want to be, uh, I want to be a confident, loving partner. How can I, in situations I would think, how can I best, how can I act like her? How can I be confident and loving in this situation? Whenever I felt, if I felt disappointed, if I felt angry, insecure, whatever it may be. So in the work environments, there's something particular that triggers you. Think about how can I be, if you want to be collaborating, if you want to be creative, if you want to be a great coworker, whatever it may be. Sometimes when you make it more objective, it's easier for you to strategize. All right, so let's take a look at some of these strategies because it all sounds fantastic, but what does it exactly mean? So here's, a, here's an idea, right? So we, we have different kinds of strategies. We call them effective strategies and then helpful strategies. Now, here's a little, a little secret. The effective strategies might not necessarily be so helpful in the, in the long run. So how we define effective strategies, like we work with emotions in service of my goal. What's my emotional goal? What's my best self? I, I get to define that. And then effective strategies make us feel better in the moment. So in that sense, they're effective, right? So slam a door. Some of you mentioned that. If I'm angry and I slam a door, good, it's effective. It helps me feel better even for just a second, but it but it helps, right? Or yell at someone, send an angry email, right? Or avoid and deny, um, sometimes glare. All of these, they are effective. Some of you said, eat ice cream. Absolutely, it makes me feel better in the moment, right? Um, or having a glass of wine makes me a lot, <laughs> makes me feel a lot better in the moment. Having three bottles of wine, maybe not so much, right? So that's the idea is what's the strategy and how effective is it? So sometimes we need it. Sometimes we do need to feel better in the moment. 
the transition or the idea of transforming the emotion is how can I then start focusing on helpful strategies? And helpful strategies are those that support our emotional goals. So visualize a positive outcome, right? Or listening to music, calling a friend, going for a walk, stretching your chair in your chair, um, reframe the situation in your mind. Some of these are like, I mean, they're in the long run, they become really the effective strategies, right? I mean, sending an angry email, even though it will make me feel better, might not solve the situation. So maybe, you know, when I get that email, so what I do sometimes if I get an email that I don't like, I just get up from my desk and don't respond to it for 24 hours. Because I know I've gotten in a lot of trouble when I just react and respond, right? Um, sometimes I can't wait the 24 hours, but for, but I at least go on ha and go for a walk, or I dist distract. <clears throat> sorry, I distract myself with something else. Um, what else? What do you now? Here's a question for you: What do all of the effective strategies have in common? And there might be more. So if you have more, please feel free to um, share. But what do they have in common? Thanks being negative, okay. I'm sorry, someone said something. Oh, I just said the helpful strategies involve some sort of action. Okay. Well, the effective strategies are actions too, right? What do they have in common? What do these actions have in common? Angela said they change your focus. Okay. Um, that's where I think, Angela, I think you're saying that for the helpful strategies. Yes. <laughs> that's very good. Exactly. They can amplify the negative emotion. Sure. They seem negative. Okay. What else do they have in common? They're short term, of course. What else? Yes, short term, they make us feel better in the moment. Yeah. yeah. You know what else they have in common? They're usually reactive and they require no practice, no practice or intention at all, right? We just react. That's why they have in common. Of course, they help us in that one little moment, but mm -hmm. they're just a reaction versus an intentional action, right? So uh, the helpful strategies need practice. They do need practice. They need that moment of, remember that second little button? They need that moment of pause, of reframing, of deciding which quadrant, you know, of labeling the emotion, which quadrant am I in? Do I wanna be there or where do I wanna go? So yes, they are actions. They change your focus and they are in the long run, the actual strategies to move from the emotion into productive action. Mm -hmm. What else, Gwen? What questions do you guys have about this or anything to add? My one question that I think I'd like us to discuss and address is we talked about when you follow this and how you have a moment to pause in this helpful strategy. So I, I, I'll challenge it a little bit and say, what if you don't have an opportunity to pause? What if I don't have time to go for a walk or to uh, listen to some music to, to kind of work through my emotion? What would we suggest then? I would say, ask yourself this question. What is something, whatever it is, what is something that helps you regulate that emotion, that helps you kind of like um, ground yourself for a moment? You might not have the time, but so here's a couple that I, or what's a sentence, for example, a sentence or a friend, a, a phrase that can bring you back to creating that, that you know, mini pause. For example, I'm going to tell you a really cheesy example, but it works. So I don't know how many of you have kids and if lately you have watched this movie, Luca. So my son, actually, his name is Lucas, but there's this movie out by Disney called Luca. And there's, without taking a lot of time, there's this cute little character who's like super adventurous and very courageous and is trying to convince the other character to just go for it, go and do it. So he has this phrase and everything's like English Italian. So he, he calls it silencio Bruno, which is, you know, uh, be quiet Bruno. And then the other kid's like, who's Bruno? So Bruno is this little voice in my head that tells me that I can't do this, that I, you know, all that self-talk that's not productive. So I just say silencio Bruno anyway. So ever since I saw that movie, that's my go-to phrase. 
the moment I start feeling that little, you know, emotion bubbling or my self-talk, I just go, silencio Bruno, silencio Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> I even do it with the Italian accent, right? Silencio Bruno. I was going to say, do you do it with the Italian accent? I do, I do. No, I love when I think of it by now. <laughs> So is my son, but uh, but it works. I mean, that, that one was the one that I lately have chosen. And I also have, I don't have it with me right now because um, my purse is downstairs, but I, I carry a rock that has, you know, special meaning for me. And then every time, like, even if I'm in the supermarket and I start getting anxious because there's a long line, um, you know, I have that little rock that just reminds me, it's okay, I don't have to rush. I don't have to be impatient. I mean, what, what else do I have going on? So it's not always as easy. It does take a lot of practice. That's what these helpful strategies also have in common is they take practice. They take intention. And, uh, and then, you know, and then they don't always come out. I mean, they never come automatically to us, right? It's, it requires that intention and that practice. Yes. Does that answer your question, Gwen? It does. It does. I have another, I have my practice, but I'm going to hold off because I just saw the time and we have six minutes left so we can get through the rest of the slides. Um, right, but yeah, yes, really figure, out what, figure out what it is for you. There's always an opportunity to pause. And I can assure you, if you have a person in front of you, if you tell them, give me a moment, they're more than willing to give it to you more than often. People are much more understanding than we give them credit to be. Take it away. Take it away. All right. Okay. So just quickly, these are some other ways. And what I love about this slide here that talks about, uh, uh, Gabby, what do you call it? The power seven? We call uh, it the big seven. The, the big, big seven. seven. So these are the big seven, right? And so when you look at what we have listed here, right, these are all things that you can do to support in your emotional health, to support um, in really all of your health, because I don't know about you and a lot of these, nothing is new here. We know that if you sleep well, it's good for your body. It's good for your health, for your mental health, for your emotional health, all of those things. You know, if I don't sleep well, I know that I'm probably going to be a little bit grouchier. I'm not going to be in the best of mood, right? Also, and so all of these uh, physical things impact our moods as well. And so it's, it's important to, to give the time and energy to these things because that's what's helping you in function in a more balanced, um, emotionally healthy way. Um, so we'll share these so that you have uh, this slide to reference, but um, this, is, this is all not new information. And at the end of the day, all of this is just helping feed your soul, your body, your mind in some way to, uh, to live healthier and happier. Next slide. All right, so uh, we're, we're just about to finish up here and uh, we have some, uh, Gabby and myself are very, very big lovers of quotes um, and just some real powerful ones around the topic of emotions, um, around understanding even with the perception of others when it comes to our emotional experience. Uh, we'll go ahead and move to the next slide uh, just to keep advancing quickly. I think we're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, this was another activity, but don't worry, you'll see it in one of our next workshops. And here, so just quickly, um, you know, how's everyone feeling? You've, uh, we've given you a lot of information and we hope that you um, enjoyed it. Did anybody have any questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself or to put them in the chat quickly. And um, we'll also move to the next slide. Uh, that has listed, we have, like we said, this is a series of workshops that we are doing. And so these are the next two, it is four. So we have our fourth one in December, but we have the one upcoming October 25th. And then we have our one on November 8th. And really all of them are designed to kind of address some of those major markers when it comes to um, being in the workforce, working with others or in really just uh, starting your company. These are all parts of just being a working professional. So uh, you're more than welcome also, obviously to join us. Thank you so much, Gwen and Gabby. It's always just it's so great having you um, and the information is just, uh, I feel better. I feel a lot better afterwards. <laughs> you know, silencio Bruno and I'm happy I'm good to go, right? Yes, silencio Bruno, please right, right. take that. That was, that was up and please say the Italian, with the Italian accent, Tanya, you can say it so well with the Italian accent. 
You got to use the hands, right? You got to use the hands. That's what, that's what, that's what does it. Yes. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thanks to, to, again to Gwen and Gabby. Thanks for all of our guests today. Thank you to the Rec Lab uh, staff. And I do encourage everyone to sign up for the and two remaining workshops. I will go ahead and I'll put the information in um, in the chat there and the video of this will be available for all of you um, as of tomorrow if you'd like to come to our YouTube channel at the Rec Innovation Lab and we just love seeing everyone here and we uh, love having you and we will see you again at the next workshop. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much everyone. We'll see you at the next one. Yep. Bye everybody. Take care. Bye.